What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back here again with another video. So, we're going to check out the 10 best Shawn Michael feuds from Cultaholic Wrestling, man. Shawn Michael has had some amazing feuds in his time. Some of the ones I can think of off the top of my head, uh, his feud with Kurt Angle was fantastic around WrestleMania season time. That was a good feud. His feud with um, Chris Jericho was fantastic fantastic around the time i want to say it was like 2007 2008 around that time um where he was supposedly going to retire on the chris uh talk with jericho his little talk show and then he ended up you know they end up getting into it he ends up getting thrown into like this uh the tv monitor you know he had to fake an eye injury because of the glass and then uh, at another point, his wife, uh, Shawn Michaels' wife, ended up getting punched in the face by Jericho. It was just a very good feud around that time, man. It was very enjoyable, so I remember that. And another notable one, of course, his feud with Triple H when he came back to wrestling. Man, that feud was great, bro. Fantastic. One of the best things on Monday Night Raw at the time and i'm sure there's uh, some other notable ones we're gonna see if they have those in there i'm sure they do you can tell by the thumbnail of their actual video uh they have him with the jericho segment and kurt angle so hey man uh let's see where they rank them on their on their on their list and i appreciate all love and support roll to 60k let's get right into it he knows he's sexy he'll get the click to get his colleagues fired. Yes, it's time we <laughs> talked about Shawn Michaels. <laughs> the Heartbreak Kid, the showstopper, arguably the greatest in-ring performer of all time, mm -hmm. and at times, wrestling's biggest asshole. Blurring the lines between kayfabe and shoot time and again, Michaels was a sensitive talent who made his fair share of enemies in the ring and in the locker room. This but regardless true. of how he was feeling on his day, Michaels was magic with everyone he faced off against. Want proof? Well, I'm Sam Driver from Cultaholic Wrestling, and these are the 10 best Shawn Michaels feuds. Join us. Number 10. John Cena. That was Heading a good into one. WrestleMania 23, mm -hmm. WWE Champion John Cena had never faced a sterner test than Mr. WrestleMania himself. Some people feel like uh, Shawn Michaels should have uh, been able to capture the championship one more time. So, but they were still going with John at the time. In the lead up to the granddaddy of them all, Cena and HBK had a fragile alliance. The two did lift the WWE tag titles, but HBK wanted the WWE title again, a belt that he'd not held since 1998. Mm -hmm. Cena was still pretty raw in ring at this time, but the two clicked wonderfully, going for nearly 30 minutes in the main event before Big Match John got the Big Match win with the STF. <laughs> Michaels big, big wasn't going to take this loss lying down, and several weeks later, the two would go again, wrestling for an hour in London, with Michaels getting the win in one of Raw's greatest ever matches. The two would meet again at Backlash 2007 in a fatal four-way, with Cena retaining the WWE title despite eating Sweet Chin music. And the two would clash again, but once again Cena would leave victorious, successfully defending the WWE title against DX at Survivor mm -hmm. Series 2009. Number 9. Vince McMahon. After a life of being a bit of a prick, Shawn Michaels found God and completely cleaned up his act. Vince McMahon, being a lunatic, used it as an excuse to feud with Michaels and God. Because why not, eh? Of course. Of course, man. I mean, God did show up again. You know, he was the person that told one of the cameramen to cut the rope. <laughs> So that way, Roman Reigns could retain his title at Extreme Rules. Shout out to the man above, man. Vince wasn't buying the fact that Sean was a reformed man and wanted to knock him down a few pegs, threatening to screw Sean like he did Brett. Cue Vince attempting to screw Sean first by calling for I the do remember this feud. This is crazy. I, I do actually remember this. Bell during a no-holds-barred match between HBK and Shane O'Mac, then having the entire spirit mm -hmm. squad batter Sean on the reg. This all led up to a street fight between Sean and Vince at WrestleMania 22, which ended with a bin-wearing Vince eating a massive... That was that was a nice spot. A table. 
lunatic. Things got weirder at Backlash when Shawn Michaels and God t <laughs> I want y'all to understand this was a real thing for those who were not born yet. This, unfortunately, this was a real thing. They had a spotlight on the entrance ramp and angelic music as God was his tag team part. I <sighs> gotta love wrestling. Teamed up against Vince and Shane. The McMahons won this one. Of course. Eventually, Triple H joined in, and a reformed DX mm -hmm. proceeded to trounce everyone involved while covering them in paint and poop and selling lots and lots uh, of t-shirts. Yep, lots of merch. Number eight, Diesel. Leading <laughs> yeah, that wrestling has its cringe moments, as it always has. His stock increased. Sean enlisted the giant Diesel to watch his back, and soon the two dudes with attitudes rolled over the WWE with a leather gloved iron fist. The two reigned as tag champs, and Diesel held the Intercontinental Championship. But things fell apart when Michaels accidentally super kicked <laughs> Diesel one too many times, costing Big Daddy Cool the IC title and causing the pair to forfeit the tag titles. Diesel didn't look back and soon won the WWE title in mere seconds after jackknifing Bob Backlund at a house show. HBK was incensed and determined to prove he could get to the top without Diesel's help, winning the 1995 Royal Rumble from the number one spot and setting up a showdown at WrestleMania 11. Sean had his working boots on, allegedly intentionally trying to make Diesel look bad as a message to Vince McMahon to make HBK the face of the company. But Diesel would fell Michaels with a jackknife and walk off with the WWE title, Pamela Anderson and Melissa McCarthy. And a year <laughs> later, they had another classic at Good Friends, and this is one of those things where wrestling, you know, when it comes to, like, who wants to be over, who wants to be at the top of the card, there are some politics. There's a lot of politics, especially back then. I know there was a lot of politicking going on behind behind the, behind the scenes. So, yeah, I, Shawn Michaels, you know, from different reports back then, he was, a, he, he was an asshole. He was talented, very talented, but he was an asshole. Bitter enemies. Number seven, Steve Austin. Despite propping the new generation up for most of the decade, the times they were a changing, and it was clear mm -hmm. that Steve Austin was the WWE's brightest star. Needing that first WWE title win to properly strap the rocket to his back, Austin won the 98 Rumble and set his sights straight on WWE champion Shawn Michaels. Michaels was a little overshadowed by DX's newest recruit Mike Tyson, mm -hmm. but made sure all eyes were on him heading into WrestleMania 14, raising Austin's ire time and again. All this while dealing with a career-threatening back injury. Despite staring down the end of his in-ring career, HBK still wanted to prove that he was Mr. WrestleMania and didn't want anyone outshining him, allegedly not wanting to even do the job to Austin. After some encouragement from The Undertaker... <laughs> I did hear this story. Like, he didn't want to put over Austin. Like, he didn't want to. I remember people, you know, talking about this, reports of this. And uh, I th always thought, thought that was be interesting. I was like, they don't, why he didn't want to put over Austin, man? Like he, at this time, he was, they were trying to capitalize on him growing, his growing momentum. And Undertaker's like, yo, bro, mm -mm. stop being a bitch. Put that nigga over, bro. Hope we gonna have some issues. <laughs> and that's how you know people listen to the Undertaker, bro. No matter what area it was in, people respected and listened to the Undertaker. Taker, Michaels pounced into Boston's Fleet Center for his last hurrah, but despite stacking the deck in his favor, Austin planted him with the Stone Cold Stunner to win the big one. Number six, Marty Jannetty. Oh, Not long yeah, after this, making the jump from yeah. the AWA, the Rockers became one of the Yeah, this was this is one of the things that kind of catapulted him to where he, you know, was at that time and where he, you know, he eventually became the HBK that we know. Him uh, splitting up with his tag partner. Of course, I wasn't really into wrestling because I wasn't around. <laughs> wasn't even born when things like this was going on. I was like a little baby, you know, when stuff like this was happening. But, you know what I'm saying, I did know, you know, his his kind of rise to fame, as you could say, or rise to notoriety. 
of the most beloved teams in the WWE. But after several years without winning any gold, cracks of course started to appear. The two took to Brutus Beefcake's barbershop to clear the air, but Michaels shocked yep. the world by throwing Marty through a window and transformed into the Heartbreak Kid. Yep. Almost a year later, an HBK was Intercontinental Champion with the world at his feet, but Marty returned to get his revenge and Michaels' title. At Royal Rumble 93, the two clashed in a heated bout, but Michaels escaped with the gold and promptly got Marty legitimately fired. Oh. Mr. Perfect lobbied with WWE management to reinstate Janetti, and Marty finally got revenge on Michaels, usurping him for the IC title on a May 93 edition of Raw with help from Perfect. Marty was finally out of Sean's shadow for about two weeks until <laughs> HBK took the title back on a house show and kicked Marty to the curb once and for all. Number five, <laughs> Kurt Angle. When Shawn Michaels threw Kurt Angle out of the 2005 uh -huh. Royal Rumble, Angle snapped. Savage. This was, this is how you create a great feud. You can create feuds through the Royal Rumble. Someone get pissed they got eliminated and they just go crazy. I love this. This was a good feud. Fan Michaels and fantastic. tried to break his ankle with the ankle lock. Angle wanted to prove that anything Michaels could do, Kurt could do better and faster. He battered Marty Jannetty just like Sean. He won a ladder match just like Sean. He hung around with Sherry just like Sean, <laughs> but Sean could never win an Olympic gold medal with or without a broken freaking, freaking neck. neck. The two clashed at WrestleMania 21 in one of the greatest yep, matches yep. of all time. Yes. A technical masterclass by two of the greatest, with Sexy Kurt getting the win with the ankle lock. Mm -hmm. Michaels challenged Angle to round two at Vengeance, with HBK getting the win this time after Sweet Chin Music. Now tied one apiece, a rubber match was signed off in October. A 30-minute Iron Man match. When the time expired, the scores were tied at two. This is, this is, I miss feuds like this. We are getting some feuds like this. We are getting, uh, I'm, I'm going to say recently, the Edge in Seth Rollins feud is giving me nice vibes because they can both go in the ring. There's a lot of personal issues they have. Seth is trying to prove that he is better than, than Edge and he's not in his shadow. He's not Edge like and Edge is trying to prove that he can still go in the ring, that he still is the rated R superstar. So it's good to have feuds like that. It's few far in between as of late, but when we do get them, gotta cherish them and gotta love them, man. 2-2. Two, two. Michaels demanded sudden death, but Angle walked out, and we never got a true decider. Number four, Which Chris sucks. Jericho. Oh and yeah, the most I knew this had to be US based wrestler of his generation. Countless wrestlers based their style on Shawn Michaels, including Chris Jericho. Mm -hmm. Tired of being dubbed an HBK clone, Y2J wanted to prove that he was better than Michaels, but couldn't get the job done at WrestleMania 19. Jericho never forgot this defeat, and several years later reignited their feud in an extremely bloody manner by putting Michaels face yep. first through the Jeritron 6 thousand at the great american bash jericho beat sean to a bloody pulp the ref stopping the bout as a necessity hbk considered retirement but a gloating jericho lit a fire under his chaps when he yep. accidentally punched sean's wife rebecca in the face now it was, it was personal, personal. Yeah, and given the tables were turned this time hbk beat jericho so badly that the match was called off by the time No Mercy rolled around, Jericho oh, so was good. the World Heavyweight Champion and wanted to prove himself once and for all in the match that Michaels made famous, the ladder match. Jericho left with the title, if not all his teeth, his point proven. Number three, The Undertaker. Mm, Shawn course. Michaels inadvertently put this cost one. The Undertaker the WWE title at SummerSlam 97 and signed his own death warrant, with Taker seeking revenge in the first ever Hell in a Cell match mm -hmm. at Bad Blood. Undertaker victimized Michaels, but a debuting Kane handed HBK the win. Shawn and Undy would fight again at Royal Rumble 98, and although Michaels suffered a legitimate career-ending injury, he escaped with the WWE. WWE title as Kane set Undertaker on fire. Brothers, eh? Mm -hmm. What are they like? 12 years later, and the two would cross paths again, with Michaels wanting one thing above everything else. The I forgot to even put this in the list. I don't know why I did not wasn't even thinking of this. Their feud 
their little the part where Sean is getting closer to the end of his career. And the one thing he wants to do is to end the Undertaker streak. Can we just say those were the best stringer matches of Wrestle in, in WrestleMania history? There's I'm sorry, that's just my personal opinion. Those matches between Shawn Michaels versus The Undertaker to end his career, best matches. They should have been they, the best matches. There's nothing else to say. Nothing else to say. Undertaker's streak. The two old gunslingers put on the greatest match in Mania history, but it wasn't enough as Michaels tasted defeat. Shawn wanted another shot, knowing he'd come achingly close, but Taker rebuffed him. After HBK cost Taker the World Heavyweight title at Elimination Chamber, Taker granted his wish, but HBK would have to put his career mm -hmm. on the line. The two went to war once more, the result the same, as we bid farewell to the showstopper. Number two. Fantastic match. Fantastic series of matches. Oh, man. I remember watching them live, just losing my fucking mind, bro. Pull H. When Michaels returned to WWE of in course, 2002, you knew this was be there. it wasn't long until DX were back together. For about 10 seconds until Triple H planted HBK with a pedigree. Mm -hmm. Hunter claimed that he used Michaels to get to the top and threatened by HBK's return, vowed to permanently retire him. The two battered each other at SummerSlam, yep. HBK getting the win in his first match in four years, but things were only getting started. Trips would take Michaels out for several months with a sledgehammer attack, but Michaels would return at Survivor Series. No, 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 no. <laughs> Y'all are stupid. <laughs> winning the World Heavyweight title in the first ever Elimination mm -hmm. Chamber. <laughs> Y'all are so stupid. <laughs> Hunter would take the belt back at Armageddon after a hellacious three stages of hell match, mm -hmm. and the two would pause their feud for the time being. Heading into WrestleMania 20, the two fought to a series of draws, but Chris Benoit would leave Mania with the gold as Michaels and Tripp's blood feud continued. And after two years of carnage, Triple H got the final victory yep. after nearly an hour inside Hell in a Cell. One of the best Hell in a Cell matches of all time. This is why I'm hoping Seth and Ron, uh, Seth and uh, Edge will have a great Hell in a Cell. I think they will. One of the best Hell in a Cells of all time. Cell at Bad Blood 2004. And number one, oh, who could it be? It's oh, Bret yeah. Hart. That makes sense, Shawn too. Michaels, the flamboyant the showstopper. Bret Hart, the no-nonsense technician. In a politically charged WWE searching for its new flag bearer, the two were on a collision course based on personal hatred, jealousy, and exploding egos. HBK and Hitman had faced off over the years, especially in the tag division, but when Shawn won the 96 Royal Rumble and leapt into the main event, their relationship very quickly went downhill. After beating Bret for his first WWE title in an Iron Man match at WrestleMania 12, Shawn's influence backstage reached an all-time high, and Bret did not like it one bit. Heading into Mania 13, HBK lost his smile and forfeited the title rather than lose it to Bret, and the pair's genuine animosity spilled over onto television. Mm -hmm. Personal jabs, homophobic slurs, sunny days, nothing was off the table. This, I, I don't know why I didn't put this in the list uh, at the beginning of the video. They legitimately hated each other at one point. This was not, a lot of that shit was not, you know what I'm saying, fake. Like, they legitimately had issues with each other backstage that would sometimes spill over into their promo segments into their matches like they didn't like each other leading to backstage brawls and yep. bruised egos yep. sean would have the last laugh though with brett set to leave for wcw hbk vince mcmahon and a few others concocted yeah. the infamous montreal, montreal screw job, job. Yeah. with michaels reigning over brett once and for all in controversial fashion <laughs> who's your daddy montreal yeah yeah he <laughs> that's and that's the thing that that I'm I'm glad that Sean is not on that path. He's a much different person now. And I'm pretty sure, you know, him and Brett may have, you know, buried buried the hatchet. They don't have as many issues as they used to before. But yeah, this is the one thing I did know. Like they legitimately had issues with each other and which made their feud a lot more intense, a lot more believable back then. But comment down below, let me know what's your favorite HBK feud 
of all time. I would like to get y'all opinion on that. Uh, appreciate all the love and support. Road to 60K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.